Why is art history worth learning? Why are some people obsessed with artists or pieces of art that were done centuries ago? Or even more confusing, how are people so obsessed with modern art that looks like a five-year-old could have done it? Today, I've decided to tell you my personal story about learning and studying art history and why it has changed my life. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon off to the side so you can get notified of new art history videos that I publish each week. My passion and love for art history started when I took an AP art history class my senior year of high school. I had no idea what I was getting into. I just knew that my older siblings took the class and so therefore I also needed to take it. The experiences I had in that class led me to take more classes in college, which turned into a minor in art history, which led me to do a study abroad in Europe. Now I'm a high school AP art history teacher, and I love nothing more than seeing my passion for art rub off onto my students. I often tell people that it's not me teaching the work that makes students fall in love. It's the artwork. It speaks for itself. So I'm gonna tell you about three specific experiences I've had that have helped me gain an appreciation for art history. I've had many and I'm sure you have too, but I'm just gonna focus on three for today. This video feels really vulnerable to me because sharing these personal experiences that I have is like sharing a piece of my soul with you. Art is so personal and that's what I think makes it so important to the individual. So just keep that in mind as I tell you about each of these experiences. These are my experiences and you have or will have some of your own. So the first experience I'm going to tell you about was when I was a senior in high school sitting in a dark room with a teacher clicking slides. Next. Next. We were talking about the romantic movement, which is all about drama, it's all about emotion, and it's in a time period in Europe when Napoleon was taking over. There's a lot of war. And my teacher clicks the slide next, and up pops this amazing image. It's called the 3rd of May, 1808 by Francisco Goya. And I can't explain to you what I felt, but I felt like I got slapped in the face and punched in the stomach at the same time. I had never seen an art piece like this before. It really was kind of visceral and ugly, but as my teacher started to explain the context of the piece, it just hit me. It hit me that like art is power and it's powerful in a lot of ways. As my teacher starts explaining the context of the piece, I start kind of pulling uh, things together, right? So she tells me this is a war scene, which I could get. There's soldiers with guns, there's blood and dead, you know, figures throughout the piece. But she explains the story behind it, the context of Napoleon's army kind of just coming in and slaughtering the whole town. It was the first time I realized that when you analyze art, when you break it down contextually and also visually, knowing the form, knowing the vocabulary, knowing the symbolism that could be held in a piece like this, analysis can like create a really powerful emotional experience. Yes, the context kind of, you know, is a vehicle into that, but when you start breaking it down, it becomes purposeful to you as a viewer, right? When you start looking at why are they choosing these colors? Why is this figure larger than the others? Why can't we see the faces of the French soldiers, but the faces of the Spaniard show every possible emotion of grief that you can experience? The fear, the despair, the power, the rage. I mean, it's all there and you start trying to break it down to understand it better. And that's something only the viewer can do. That's like, I don't know, I just had this experience that me as a viewer, I am important to art. But I think more than anything, it showed me that I can become empathetic through art. Art can teach me the human experience and I can have access to things that I would never have access to. I have never been in that situation, nor will I probably ever be. But Looking at and analyzing works of art like this made me realize the power of empathy and the power that art has in order to usher that in. <laughs> My second experience came as a shocker to me. I was one of those 
people <laughs> that I thought modern art was dumb. Contemporary art, like a child could do that. I can do that. Why is this cool? When I had this experience in high school again, I was on a trip to San Francisco and I sat in the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art and there was a Rothko piece uh, on the wall and there's like a bench right in front of it. And I remember my teacher teaching us about Rothko and one of the things she said was, you either get it or you don't. And that's like it. And so I remember being like, I don't get Rothko. So I, I uh, was, my intention was to mock. And I went and I sat on a bench in front of a Rothko piece. It's called number 14. I started crying. I usually sob when I see art. It's just, I'm an emotional being and I see things and I cry. But <laughs> this piece, for some reason, I just started crying. I couldn't explain why. So I sat with the piece for about 15 minutes and I didn't move. I, I just like let it kind of wash over me and I just kind of let my mind wander. So Rothko paints his pieces on a machine size scale, meaning you're supposed to be just encompassed by his pieces that even in your peripheral, all you can see is Rothko. And he paints these blocks of color and it's dumb and it doesn't make any sense and there's no meaning behind it. But as I started kind of like having this emotional reaction, I decided, okay, I gotta learn more about this Rothko guy and what the, the point of his art is. He comes from a group called the Abstract Expressionists, the most famous one being Jackson Pollock. And the idea is that abstract expressionists want to express emotion, but they don't want you to be held down by form. So they take form out of their work. They remove shapes. They don't have figures in it. There's no background. And as Rothko does, he leaves you with just the basic elements of art. You're just there with color and maybe a line or two. The idea is like you just sit and you feel. So I sat and I felt, and all of a sudden this artwork became me. Like if anybody asks my favorite piece, I say number 14, they look at it, they laugh, and I say I can't explain it because it it's me. So that experience taught me a couple of things. It taught me that art is the human experience. Before we had written language, before we had community, before we had economy, we had art. Those cave paintings back from, you know, 25,000 BCE, that was art. It's the basic, most intimate form of human expression. Connecting to that, connecting to humanity, connecting to people that have come before and people that are going to follow after. You just feel like a larger part of yourself, but you also feel like an individual who has importance. When I look at art, when I study art, I become more human. I become a part of the human experience because that is what art is. So my last experience is gonna come from my role as a teacher. I teach AP art history at a high school and there is something powerful about being a high school teacher, but there's something even more powerful about working with these teenagers. One of my best experiences as a teacher was taking a group of art history students to San Francisco so that they could see and experience art in person. And that is where it's solidified to me in my brain that art history is really important. As I followed my students around four different art museums, I listened to them talk and the things that I heard astounded me. Not that only that they could talk about art analysis, they could break down pieces they'd never seen, they would run to find me so they could show me a new favorite they had just discovered. It wasn't just that, but it was this moment where a group of teenagers, a group of people that often feel unseen, unheard, and unaccepted by the world, was going around and talking about art and talking about their connection to it and feeling seen and feeling heard and feeling understood and accepted as who they are, that is powerful. It's not me as the teacher giving off knowledge, it's the work of arts themselves. It, they have power. They have power to speak to the individual. They have power to connect yourself to 
who came before, who's coming next. They answer hard questions like, what is the point of life? Why am I here? What is the purpose? Art expresses the emotion, answers the question, and art, most importantly, is for you. So those are just three personal experiences that I've had and how art history has changed my life. I'm sure you have so many experiences too. And one of my favorite things about art is that it can connect us to others. So please tell me your stories. How are you connecting to art? How has it changed your life? Even if you're new to this, tell me what you think so far. And just remember that art can help you practice empathy, can connect you to humanity as a whole, but most importantly, it's personal. It tells your story, it becomes a part of you and it helps you feel necessary. Anyway, I'd love to hear from you. Please hit the subscribe button so you can keep joining me each week as we talk about art history, as we fall further in love with it, and as we learn together that art just keeps getting better. <laughs>